couple rest days, got to love them. Gives you a chance to kind of catch up and recuperate, recover from those long runs or speed work, or whatever it is that you might have been doing. And today, though, what I had planned to do, because it's Saturday, is I was going to post maybe one of your favorite recipes or meals and prepare it here in the kitchen. But I decided to pivot just a little bit. I still plan to do something similar to that going forward, maybe for next Saturday. But when I was researching online and looking up more nutritional information specific to runners, I came across this recipe meal planning book. It's called Run Fast, Cook Fast, Eat Slow. And that's by uh, Shaylin Flanagan. Now, if you're not familiar with Shaylin, she sets a number of college records when it comes to cross country, but she's also an Olympic uh, medalist as well. So, And she won the New York Marathon, so she's got some pretty high credentials behind her. She's a little bit older runner now, like me, although I think I still have a few years on her. She's, I think, 40, 41, something like that. One of the things that specifically caught my attention about her and her credentials is at one point, she ran six marathons in 42 days. I think that's just incredible. To be able to have your body prepped and ready to go for six marathons in 42 days is pretty crazy, at least in my, in my opinion. But it got me thinking about my own situation because I'm faced with a bit of a dilemma this year. So as you know, I qualified for Boston and Chicago. I'm signed up for both of those races. So I'm looking forward to that. And that's what this whole series is about, just kind of documenting my experience preparing for the Boston Marathon. But Chicago Marathon is in October. And the thing that I've been debating about is whether or not to apply to run the New York City Marathon. I did run a fast enough time to qualify. Don't know that I'll get in. But whether or not I even want to take that chance because the Chicago Marathon is run in October and the New York Marathon is run, I think, just a month later. So it's really, really close together. And so in my mind, I'm wondering, am I going to be able to run basically back-to-back -back marathons and do it safely and, you know, perform? <laughs> you know, that's the big question. So I was inspired by her story. And so I went ahead and picked up the book. It, now, I haven't, I have only had this a day, so I really haven't had a chance to, to look it over very thoroughly. But what I have read so far, some of the meal preps and some of the thought that went into creating this uh, recipe meal planner for us, I was impressed with. And so I took the time this morning when I was having my first cup of coffee to just kind of read through it a little bit and try to decide where I want to take it. Because I know that everything we do starts really with nutrition. We got to have good nutrition to support you know, our recovery process, those antioxidants, anti-inflammatories, all that kind of thing that's going to help us to recover and to perform, give us the energy that we need in order to be able to accomplish the things that we want to do. So that's kind of where I'm going with the nutrition side of things. On the other side, on the running aspect of it, so everything we do as runners, we can only go so far by running more miles or doing more speed work. We definitely need nutrition to back us up to help us get there to meet our goals. But on the run side, the thing that I'm paying really close attention to right now is just my overall general physical fitness. My sense is when I'm out running, so yesterday I did a fart lick run, and I'll put the results of that run at the end of this video. But when I was doing that fart lick and all of the speed work that I've done so far, and again, we're into week four right now, latter part of week four of this training, uh, I've noticed that my overall general physical fitness isn't where I thought it should be or where I thought it might be. So those long runs and the speed work is coming a little bit harder than I thought that it should be at this point. So I'm a little disappointed in where I'm at just overall my general physical fitness. Not that it's terrible, I just thought it might be better. And when I'm out there doing those runs just without looking at any data, just running by feel, I know that it is. I, I know that it's not where I want it to be. But then it's backed up by the data that I collect with my Garmin and the reports that I can get off of Garmin or connect.garmin.com. When I go back in, I look at my training load, look at where I'm at, look at my VO2 max. It's clear that my VO2 max did take a dip. And I, I know why it took a dip. It took a big dip right after um, the Detroit Marathon. So mid-October, after I completed that race, I was suffering from some overuse injury. I was having a little bit of shin splint pain toward the latter part of that training block, and I didn't want it to turn into something worse. So I made sure that I took some time after the race to be able to just recover. So I didn't run, I rode my stationary bike, did stuff like that. 
But then when I did get back out and running, I felt good and I was still kind of running on that marathon high, I guess. And I pushed it a little bit more than I should have when I was just out on a general run around town. I wasn't training, wasn't doing anything specific, just having some fun. I think I was running in the Adios Pro 3 and I was enjoying the midsole ride of those. But I, I overdid it a little bit and I pulled a hamstring muscle or something. I did something to my left leg and it's still bothering me a little bit today. It's gotten a lot better through the help of Netic. And now Netic, if, you, if, you're, if this happens to be the first time that you've you know, checked out the channel, welcome. I really appreciate you joining us here. And as I document my marathon journey or just really I'm just documenting my life as a runner specifically, I guess. It's kind of the Seinfeld of running channels. Uh, it's just what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, but welcome. But I, I connected with Netic Health, which is an online physical therapy group that did a pre-marathon assessment for me. So they, they went through uh, you know, a number of different routines with me to, to discover or to try to pinpoint any kind of imbalances that I might have, any kind of weaknesses that I might have, and any kind of issues that I might be dealing with, like that hamstring issue. And from there, they developed you know, all kinds of mobility exercises, which I try to do on a daily basis, and some strength training. And they have three different sets. I tr I'm trying to get to each one of those sets at least once a week. So three different times during the week, I might be doing some strength training, which is primarily body weight exercises for the most part. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm at with that. But as I go back and I look at some of the data that I collected on my VO2 max, I'm starting to collect data on my lactic threshold. So that'll be interesting over time. But I just got a new heart rate monitor that's um, collecting that data for me. I'll, I'll along with a bunch of other data as well. So I'll be tracking that over time. But the one thing that I have been tracking pretty consistently for a long period of time is my VO2 max. And as I said, after, you know, after I ran that race in October because of some injury types of issues, I purposely didn't run that much. I ran a little mainly because I couldn't stand to not run. It's a bit of a mental boost for me to be out there. So there's only so long that you can be away from it before you really start to miss it and want to get out there and try it. Uh, so, but for the most part, I try to take, took off as much time as I could to allow my body to recover, to heal, so that I could be ready to start this training block. But as a result, my VO2 max dropped and I definitely am feeling it right now. So that's something that I'm going to be certainly paying attention to and going forward. So my plan is tomorrow, for example, I'm doing some more speed work. I'm going to be running some intervals or three 10 minute intervals um, that I'll be running at threshold pace. So I have 30 minutes of hard running with a couple minutes in between those sessions to recover. But I'm going to make sure that I'm pushing it hard enough where it'll start to impact my lactic threshold, so my body's ability to clear that lactate out of my muscles and to improve my VO2 max, because that's kind of where I feel like right now I need the most work. So I'm definitely gonna be paying attention to that tomorrow. But if you wanna check out today's race, just stick around here for a second and I'll put the results from the race, or not race. <laughs> oh, good thing it's Saturday and I've got time to recover from <laughs> from that fartlek run that I did yesterday. I'll put that at the end of the video here today. And in the comment section, if you guys wanna have a conversation a little bit about nutrition. So just tell me what your thoughts are. I asked this question earlier and I did get a couple of people that responded that said, yes, I would like to maybe swap some recipes, but I'm pivoting just a little bit. So basically what I'm proposing to do is on Saturdays, I would go out and make sure that I bought all of the things that's gonna be necessary to prepare, for example, a breakfast from this book. Now, within, the, uh, within this meal planning book, they have two weeks, basically a spring, summer, fall, winter week. So they have two weeks of complete meal planning ideas. So Monday through Sunday, kind of a thing. Uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, a couple snacks in between there. So there's lots of different meal ideas. Now, some of them are, you know, leftovers from the day before or what have you, but, but be that as it may, there's lots of different good ideas in here about different things that we can have for our breakfast, for our lunch and so on to help us fuel up. And there's some uh, pre-race type meals in here as well. So my thinking is, I would just start maybe on whatever day it starts on. I don't remember what the calendar date that they have started on, probably on a Monday. 
uh, but start with maybe the breakfast for that Monday, and that might be Saturday's video. And then the next Saturday, maybe I'll do the lunch, and then the following Saturday, that would do maybe the dinner, and then the following Saturday, the snacks that were you know interwoven within that week, something like that. But so let me know what your thoughts are. If that's something you're at all interested in, if not, that's okay. This this channel is all about just us sharing sitting around, having a cup of coffee, that kind of thing, shooting the breeze about running. And if you'd rather that uh, we do something else where I take it in a different direction, let me know that too. You know, I don't want to waste your time. I want this to be fun for both of us. All right, so that is it for today's video. I'm going to put up in the, uh, the results from the Fartlek run. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind of one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim.